we didn't rehearse that much. Be it was like rehearse an hour or two, and then they go to the pub. They were happy that they found somebody, right? So I'm over there with Ronnie a lot of times, and we're listening to stuff. I'm writing charts out, you know, not really sophisticated charts. There were some notes, and then we'd say stop, right. count four, you know, things like that. And uh, I wrote this book, get me through the, the set. And then come the gig, it starts raining, and the book got wet, and all the ink ran, and it was all a mess. So it lasted like three songs, and I went, oh shit. Then we just winged it, and it was and it was great. At the end of that show, I threw that book out. I signed it. I said, this is my first gig with Zab. I threw it out in the audience. Nice. Somebody's got Someone's it. Got a nice little tribute I never there. seen it on eBay. Not yet. Not yet. Oh my gosh. You know, it's, it's so funny. I've had this conversation with my dad so many times because I started at such a young age I feel like I've been doing this forever and um, you know sometimes I forget that I'm still only 21 and I have so much more time to accomplish so many more things but um, you know I'm just so thankful and blessed for where I'm at right now in my career because you know I hear it more than more than once that that you know people are like well you've done so much already like more than what you know some people have done in their lifetime sure. and you know and it's it's so awesome to hear that because I'm just doing what I love to do I, I love music I love drumming I love singing and dancing I just love entertaining and the fact that I'm you know helping people and inspiring people and and making you know hopefully a difference in lives that's just you know that's really what I want to do through my music Okay, when, okay, we started, we recorded our first record in 83. We released Show No Mercy. So 84 is when I first started using double bass. Was it just an influence from, did you see other bands, like, or did the music, you know, I wanted to take the, the I wanted to take the drums into a, a, a step forward or take it in a different direction. I was hearing what, what drummers like Clive Burr were doing with Iron Maiden and and then, you know, I think what really kicked it off uh, was uh, watching or no, no, uh, listening to Filthy Animal from uh, Motorhead play Overkill. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So I think that really, that was awesome. Yeah. Um, we, I did Hal Melvin and the Blue Notes, Teddy Pendergrass, uh, uh, the OJs, uh, uh, Archie Bell and the Drills, uh, Gene Carn, Billy Paul. Um, just uh, let me see. <laughs> let me look. The Intruders, the Spinners, Denise Williams, Blue Magic, the Three Degrees, uh, Major Harris, uh, the Jacksons. They came when they originally left uh, Motown uh, and before they went to CBS. They came to town and we recorded them. And then there were, and be, and because of the uh, the rhythm section, MFSB was, was so popular. There were other people that would use us that weren't necessarily from Philadelphia International Records, part of the sound of, 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 the, of uh, Philly, but they would want the rhythm section. Uh, we did The Temptations. Uh, 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 who else? Let me look. James Ingram, Dion Warwick, Eaglebert Humperdinck, Eddie Kendricks, Richie Family, The Soul Train Gang, Melba Moore. Um, and so that was, it was a really exciting time to, to work directly with a record company, uh, with Gamblin' House Record Company, Philadelphia International. Because so, so, so he's my he's my inspiration, and he's my teacher, and he's my you know, I'm, and he gave, he gave me the platform. He gave he gave me the opportunity to to say my piece about technique. He gave me the, the opportunity to play to come back to have another career mm -hmm. that I had given up and never thought I'd be doing this again. And it's what really... What a great feeling. I love the kid, man. The kid, he's 48 years old. Mm -hmm. He's like my son. He has a father, though, unfortunately. Yeah. For me. Fortunately for him. Mm. But if, if I... I don't have any kids. and uh, If I had a kid, I'd want it to be him. Right. 
you know, stuff like that. So it wasn't until I got into um, high, uh, junior high school, I'm walking around one, you know, in the halls, eighth grade, and I'm noticing there's other people there, and they're not guys anymore, they're girls. So I'm noticing there's girls, and I want to meet them. But the girls only like the guys that played sports. And I can't play sports, couldn't do it. So how was I going to meet girls? All of a sudden, just like everybody else, I'm sure if you do this to 100 drummers, 99.9 .9 are going to say February 1964. There they were on TV, my saviors in black and white, the Ed Sullivan Show, the Beatles. And I looked at the, the uh, TV, and, I, and, I, and I, the greatest thing I saw was when the camera panned off the Beatles, all these girls were like going nuts for them. And then I looked at my younger sister and her girlfriends, and they were screaming at the black and white TV. And uh, I thought to myself, okay, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. I really don't care about the buzz roll. I want to be in a band like Ringo. That's what I want to do. You know? the, from, who I from who I learned so much, so yeah. much. About, about mostly about the connection of the human spirit and the, and the musical human, you know, the spiritual human and the musical human. How those two, uh, how those two people have to to be together and have to be in peace and in harmony together. Great. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks, Horacio. Mucho gusto. Un placer. Gracias. Viva PAS. Yeah. Yes.